Okay, here we go. This is Trisha Lynch. Hello, Dr. Wait, Tyson. Who? Trisha Lynch. Yes. Mm. And she says, hello, Dr. Tyson, Dr. Lou, Lord, nice Gary. <laughs> uh, Trisha from Beaverton, Oregon here. Uh, if there really is life under the water of Europa mm -hmm. or one of the other moons, will there be any way for us to observe it without possible cross-contamination. Yes, 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 yes. Oh. You probably have more about this than I do. Well, we did a whole episode yeah. on the Europa right. Clipper mission. Right. Yes, we did. NASA, it's in our archives. Check yeah. it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, NASA has an Office of Planetary Protection. Correct. And its primary goal is to make sure that cross-contamination does not happen. By saving right. us from Thanos. <laughs> For example, <laughs> there's a very famous uh, short story, award-winning short story written by physicist David Brin, called The Giving Plague, where we bring back a pathogen from Mars. Ew. Uh, yeah. Not The Giving Tree by, right. by, Shel Silverstein. by Shel Silverstein. Right, yeah. different, different book. The number one most important thing is to make sure that our spacecraft don't crash, right? We wanna make sure that their orbits are solid, that they have enough boosting situation, yeah. and at the end of the mission, we dispose of the spacecraft in a way that will not contaminate any potential environments. This is what happened with both the Galileo space probe and the Cassini space Cassini, crew around but, Jupiter and Saturn respectively. But we crashed Cassini purposely. And we crashed Galileo purposely as well. And did we- But we crashed them into the atmospheres of Jupiter and Saturn. In and so that instead we know that they of, would all burn right, up? Oh yeah, exactly. Completely. Instead just of vaporized. landing somewhere and contaminating the space, they would all just be, be burnt up. Yeah, We're not so, so careful about our own space junk, Sadly, we? No. no. We have an issue in our local near-Earth near orbit ecosystem. We are quickly approaching the point where astronomy being done from Earth is being very badly affected uh, yeah. by mm. all of the stuff that's going on. Because you get on. a bunch of reflections and a bunch Correct. of crossings. Yes. and streaks. Uh, all kinds streaks, of things. Streaks, all kinds of yeah. terrible yeah. things that mess up your information. That's yep. right. It makes it quite difficult. But... Fortunately, that is not yet the case as far as we know in places like Europa. So once you make sure your spacecraft isn't going to crash, the next thing you do is you find remote sensing strategies. So for example, we can look through the ice on the crust of Mars to see what's down there. Mm -hmm. right? So we can in fact do the same thing without landing something on there through things like the kind of radar but that we crust use. Of Mars are you talking about? Hmm? What are you talking about crust of Mars? What are you talking There's about? There's ice. I mean, at the poles. At the poles. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. In fact, there there are continents sure. full of Mar, uh, you know, ice. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of it. So there. ice penetrating radar. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in the same way that we have here, even the our weather radar, now, can which we penetrates see the big clouds. machine that melts the ice that made the former Martian atmosphere. Are we able if to see that? If it's there, we well, can see it. If it's there, we could the see The Martian it. technologies? The, yes, yeah, 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 exactly. Right. Yes. No, <laughs> well, the reactor start the reactor. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to the chopper. Total, total <laughs> recall. Ay, ay, ay. One, one of the most traumatic science fiction movies I've ever seen. But, but the book about that, right, we can remember it for you wholesale, uh, written by Philip K. Dick. That's kind of a cool book to read sometime. Why do you out. know this? <laughs> exactly. That's so wild. So wild. We only just know the movie. It's a thing. Charles knows things. <laughs> okay, fine. That's, All right. I, I have to remind, that's why we have him on, <laughs> on the show. Uh, okay. Did we right. answer the question? Was it? Yeah, man. Yes. Well, yeah, she's she's like, is, it, is it possible to do it without cross-contamination? Oh, yeah. So, so the fact the, is, we've already done it. Wait, wait, so with the ice penetrating radar, it probably won't see microorganisms, but if there's a, a macroscopic fish, it'll see it, right? That's right. Yeah, okay. And, and then therein lies the next point. Let's say we do find beautiful blue whales or something, you know, or, or gigantic whale shark fish type things down there. What do we do next? How do we study them and communicate and so forth? Right, are they edible? Um, <laughs> that is not my first thought, then, Charles. Then the Office of Planetary Protection really has to think hard. Are we gonna put a submarine, right, that goes down there? Do we want something that goes below the surface? And in that case, how do we protect the ecosystem? And do we have any idea? And the good thing about Europa, is the ice cracks, water comes up and refreezes. Refreezes. So there's a suggestion that if we just pitch tent on the surface. Mm. Let it slowly sink in. And no. <laughs> <laughs> we could dig up some of the material that came up and froze and then we thaw it out and that. possibly see right. a microwave. Without having to cause or problems. Or fish that anyway. happen to get caught up in it.
Thank you.